yes Manoj. okay perfect so i'll talk about one case study today okay so this is for the customer intent prediction and this is already done for amazon and many of the leading retail customer so you can coordinate this thing with your industry as well so the idea that customer is everywhere right and we all deal with customer only so so this one is gives you a glimpse that uh, how data science uh, data centers think and what are the steps it is required to provide so that we have a better uh, business outcome and we also provide a better services to the customer so this probably talks about uh, customer intent prediction intent means like uh, what is my intent like say if i am browsing through uh, the website, okay, uh, like I have gone to Costco site or say Walmart site or say Amazon site. So I'm going through different products and all. So I have uh, my browsing patterns. I put my digital footprint and all. But whether my intent is to buy something or just a window shopping or just browsing. So based on that pattern, like uh, uh, Amazon or say any other retail shop, they provide you recommendation. That is one thing. And also they provide you a lot of uh, information through your different channels like email channels or say WhatsApp or, or SMS, discount code, so that you are more prompt to buy that, that thing. Like say, for example, that you have gone to a site and you had started uh, browsing through iPad or say laptop and all, but you have not bought it and you have abandoned the cart. And after that, you see that something like the, some SMS comes to your, your, your phone saying that, if you buy this, you like use this discount code, right? And then um, uh, you'd be able to buy the, this product uh, at a much better price. So that way they are very specific on targeting those segments and, and targeting the customers. So how it is all done. So probably this is all done with using the data science and there's a different machine learning models that is there that works behind the scene and it is specifically target the segment. So that overall the click through is more uh, the the purchase of the product right by the customer is high and customer is like the organization is able to gain a much better sales and much better revenue from from targeting this type of customers so uh, just to understand the business problem like say this is an e-commerce site and a person is walking through or browsing uh, through different navigation in the web page on the e-commerce portal and it has different event like right? say landing page he has gone to then he has gone to the category like say men's wear, women's wear, right, or child clothing and all. And, and he or she is browsing to different product category. Then it lands to the home page and product page and all. So you see a buying pattern is there or browsing pattern is there for the user. And with this, the data point, like every second, the moment you click, the moment you are there on the web page, how much second you are there on the web page, everything is being monitored. You don't know the clue, but everything is monitored and, and, the, and the data that is available to say Facebook or say Google is so much so that they know much better than about us than we don't know about ourselves. And they know that this guy, based on my all the historical information and all, I would be able to buy an iPad or say iPhone in next year or not. So they will accurately predict all those things based on my all the historical information and all. So here the user is doing like all different events and all with event one, event two and all. So finally, my machine learning model that gives me the classification like only two uh, area, whether I am I have intention to buy or I'm just intention to browse this. So that is the final outcome. And if uh, the customer no auditor organization understand that we have intention to buy or maybe I'm not buying now, but I am a potential customer. So they will connect with me with all different channels or my preferred channels to make sure that I buy the product. So suddenly, like say, sometime you have browsing through and then you, you have clicked some of the idea of interest and suddenly you start saying that RD is there in each and every page, wherever you are visiting now. Once you click RD, you see that either you are there on to e-commerce site or you are there in economics times or you are there into knockery site Wherever you can start seeing that pop up starts coming in, how it comes. It is all based on the buying pattern, historical information, and all. So, some pixel act is there. So, that starts popping up, and it understands that you had somewhere you have shown the intention to buy this product or understand this product. And they keep on sending you uh, this information there. So, that way, it does machine learning works, and they start giving you this information and all there. Okay. 
So, and again, they retarget and all. So sometimes people are doing a lot of browsing and all, but they, they understand that they have a huge potential that they are maybe a potential customer. So they will send different type of uh, marketing, uh, say campaign to them. But if the person has intent to buy, the marketing content and the campaign would be different. So they will be targeting very, very specific. Like they will make the person prompt uh, to buy this thing with some discount code, coupon code, or some, some new uh, freebies available out there. So with this, uh, this, this case study is given there. So you can go through this case study, understand this. And, uh, and the whole idea that it has given like the structure into three different segments. So we have defined the problem statement, what type of classification is required uh, to build a business model. And then uh, you can think that uh, uh, what are the trajectory, like what are the path customer is taking while navigating through the uh, through the browsing and buying the, the, the stuff. And then based on the observation and the data that is available, machine learning algorithm works and then they start targeting the customer accordingly. So as a next step, uh, these are the business benefits, right? Take advantage of every sales opportunity we can increase because again it is all automated so no one is there to uh, to chase the customer it is all uh, like all the different channels are enabled it is all automated the moment the person clicks certain things and shows the intention the the pixel starts staging the guy the email marketing starts working on that they will start sending the discount code and all so that the finally the turn up of the, of the customer to buy the product is, is quite high so scale as you grow with the automation, you have the consistent criteria to connect with the customer. And finally, you can see the much better conversion rates in sales campaign. Like sales, whatever you are putting across for the sales funnel or sales spend you have, you will see a much better return on your investment from, from this. So that is a huge business benefit. And many of the organizations are using this. So we have built this model and this model is being deployed as a case study or say as a real time uh, customer experience to many of the organizations. So that way intent prediction is one of the most important aspect of business uh, data science, wherein uh, practically we can see that retail customer is being benefited or the organization is being benefited a lot with implementation of this intent prediction. In similar line, you can see the loyalty uh, management would be there, the loyalty engine that works, then recommendation engine would work, right? And then you can see that uh, NSP, like right? uh, net selling promotion and all from customer, that would be there. So with all those things, company is doing a lot uh, uh, with the data that they have and building this entire ecosystem. So just to give you a view that how it works from the machine learning standpoint, so based on the browsing pattern and uh, based on the customer uh, visit to the, our navigation to different sites, you keep accumulating the data. And we know like we are talking about big data. Every second, like say millions of records are keep coming to the system. And now the best part is because of all the cloud system and all, we do not have any problem storing this data. And all this data are coming into the data lake. So it is structured, unstructured, semi-structured, whatever the data is there, everything is coming. And as a data science, we have to take different steps to go through the process and define and find out the insight from the data. So now the focus is that you have all the data accumulated. It is in the form of all different ways. And then you use the data pre-processing. Then make this thing meaningful uh, for the machine to understand this. Like say here, the symbol one is given for page view. Second, like if the person has seen the product, so it has given the, the symbol too. Then similar like you have different uh, symbols out there. So this gives understanding about the project trajectory, that how the person has traversed through the path. And based on that, it gives the sequence and then the, the prediction whether the person would buy the product or not. So once you implement this machine learning algorithm and the machine model is there, you can see the response coming like this. It gives you the prediction, uh, the intent of a customer, it gives the sequence of trajectory, and then it starts giving you in the mat plot link, the graph and all. So I'll show you the graph part of this. It's quite interesting. Here you see the buying pattern of the guy. The guy has visited the site, and it starts, like say, number of events if you see on the x-axis, and then probability of purchase on the y-axis. So it's all, all happening on the real-time basis. The moment the person click this, right, you see the it is hitting uh, the probability of purchase is almost one, like 100% chance of that that guy would be purchasing this part. So he has browsed through the product, understand the product well, and then 
he has put this thing into their shopping cart. Mm -hmm. Okay. But suddenly something has come to his mind and he has not clicked the buying button. Okay. He stopped there and then he has started moving there. The moment the person moves out of from that page, right? He has not clicked. Some pixel is there tracking that guy or Google Analytics is there tracking that guy. Immediately he will see some pop-up. Okay. Like you might have seen that if you are going through a bouncing off from the page, you suddenly see one pop-up comes in and it simply asks you your user ID or password or sorry, email or your, your number so that they can connect you back onto this. So this all are happening behind the scene. So the moment they know, and it is all machine, right? Machine is working 24 seven. No one is there to work on that part. So machine is saying that this guy is almost done the, the purchase, but he has not made the payment. He has not used the uh, card. Okay. Then immediately this all discount code, everything will start flushing to his mobile, to his email, to all different channels and all to make sure that in some point in time, the guy buy this thing. And since no human interaction is there, it is all machine working on that. So the cost of this entire operation is minimal, very, very minimal. Like only thing is that like once you build this model and model is available, this model works 24 seven. So, so that way you have one system in place. This is entirely automated and based on the browsing pattern and all, you keep upselling this, this product and all. And if you see that person is not interested or maybe his buying capacity is not that much, you can provide some other alternative onto this. So you can do the cross selling of that upselling and all. So that way it, it works a lot there. And, and based on this buy pattern, every time the event happens, there is a one trigger that goes to the person and it, and the guy will be amazed that how this guy is knowing me so much. Suddenly, if you start watching a video, right, and, and you have uh, like a very uh, like affinity with the, that type of video, you will see that all the recommendation on next video is coming in like very sequential to what you have seen. Similarly, in Netflix, right, the moment you have seen, they will give you the top recommended that based on your watching pattern and all, they will give you that this is the best suited uh, uh, next uh, movie for you to watch. So this all are done based on the information and all. It's all data-driven CX, data-driven customer experience. So data decide uh, the customer fit, data decide the decision, purchasing power and all, and then they provide all this thing. So here, like the chances of uh, like, uh, uh, I mean, the intuition is not there. It is all intent and it is based on the uh, outcome and based on the browsing pattern. We are seeing how we can target the customer and how we can provide the better product or services to the uh, to the person. Or if he is not interested or he is not capable of buying that level of things, how we can do the cross sale. So, so those things are there. So, so and it is all happening on the real time basis. Yeah, Binazi, you have a question. Yeah, while we know that this uh, machine learning, let's say whatever tool we have developed. This will be a pre-packaged product as well by many companies. They would have launched it already yes. so that you buy this product and they'll do the investigation for your product, yes, your yes, website yes, or yes. your e-commerce. Yes, yes. So this machine learning, uh, like a uh, uh, yeah, machine learning model, this model is now available as a product to you. So many of the organizations, they start building this type of product and these packages are available now. So they can directly sell this thing to many of the retail customers. So someone start this building uh, all this thing and train the model means the maturity of the model determines the selling of that model, right? If it gives you much better result of the intent of the person and you show that like 99% or 98% or 95%, the person, the person would be buying this thing with this model. So company is there to, to buy that product and you can use this thing. So as a data science uh, scientist, we, we start building this, this model, right? And later on, we sell this thing back to the customers. So there are two things. One is like, if I am from product company, we build this thing. If I am from service com company, right? So in service company, we see that what type of services that we can provide to our customers and how this machine learning algorithm and the models is going to help me with that. So, so it helps both the way. Okay. So actually, if you see, this is so beneficial. Like if you look at the physically, when somebody walks into a shop and then it depends upon the acumen of the shopkeeper that what he is interested in, he really has come for shopping or for window shopping. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have a business model already. 
Business model yeah. already. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, true. And again, okay. see with the unified channels and all, uh, the customer uh, now CDP like the book that uh, he had published, right? Uh, uh -huh. It's a lot of insight about CDP. This, if you who read this, it's all customer data platform. So primarily uh, here, I have put together a lot of uh, thoughts around this that how uh, they are targeting or retargeting the customer. So the idea is that like with with uh, uh, like the shopkeeper or retail shop, right? They have the information about the customer in hand. So I don't have to ask again about Vinod. I have all the information, what is his buying pattern and all. So I know that he has come to Nike store to buy this type of product. So that much intelligence I have. So I'm showing you a very, very specified targeted segment to him so that he is very much interested. And if he's not buying, I am giving you some discount code. He is prompt to buy. Hmm. So yeah, if this entire uh, thing is, is happening. Hmm. Like if we see that he has moved out of the page, like normally physically what happens is if a person who visits a shop and then if he's walking out, right. suddenly we call, uh, shopkeeper call us, Bhaiya, and there are also many discounts. Come here, come here. What do we do then? What will they do now? What they will do? They will simply send you SMS. Like the moment you walk out <laughs> from the store, you will see one SMS has popped up and it's saying that you just browse this or you are interested into Nike shoes. Okay. Yeah. And we are giving you 30% discount on that. Uh -huh. Right now, there is an offer going on. There is so... an offer going on. Yeah, this <laughs> offer is valid for today only. This offer is valid for four hours. And it is valid for today only. And you have, let's like, say, they will say that you have loyalty point and that loyalty point is expiring today. Okay. So it is making sure that person buys this. So all different gimmicks and all are there. So this type of model is very, very much in need. So my intention was that to show you the real case study here, right? And see like how industry works and adapt data science. Not like a, just like a simple models and all wherein people keep on doing a lot of uh, like theoretical case study and all. That does not serve the purpose. Here the purpose is that to understand from industry specific uh, thing and how you can use this thing in your industry. So now you understand that how customer is being targeted into retail. So you can correlate this thing with your telco customer. So telco customer has their intention to buy certain services or product from a service provider. How you can retarget the customer, how you think around this and what type of data model or business model is going to help you. So you can start thinking around that and maybe you can create your own model just like problem statement and the steps to to serve that that customer so that way it will starts giving you more understanding and more dimension okay to address the customer need and how it is going to grow the revenue of the organization of your own company or or the organization that you are working for and also manos yeah. each click they will uh, read it Yes, yes. And again, it is like no, human is not reading, right? It is all machine is reading. So the moment you, the moment you will, you will be amazed to say that uh, there are a lot of sites, IU site uh, are there. Okay. The moment you have logged in uh, into that site, okay. Uh, and you are browsing through, it takes the entire video that how your mouse movement has happened throughout the, the, the landscape where you, you have spent more time like if you spend like say five seconds or 10 seconds in a specific column, they're going to take that much information from you. You don't know how to, everything is being tracked. Every, but like you will see it, like there are a lot of sites that will give you the video. You don't know someone is tracking you or capturing your video out there that how much time you have spent on this site and what are the section you have visited, how much time you have spent on that, that part and from where, how long it took for you to bounce off from, from that page. If you are bouncing off the page very fast, it means that the page does not have the right hook for you to hold you on that page. So they will give the information to that guy that you need to build your site so that the hook is better. The person should be able to spend more time on your page. Suddenly you will see that you have logged in or you have registered in some site and you start saying that, hey, you have not logged in for last 30 days. Okay, this is your link, please activate your link. So they want you to visit their site again and again, because that is their landing page. That is where they sell the product. So they want like person to visit and spend maximum time out of there. Yeah, so, so that way they, they keep to retargeting and all. It's against the data privacy also, right? So 
you know, like you you have signed up while you sign up the Facebook. The Facebook has like say 400 uh, pages privacy policy and all, and you just clicked on this that you agree. Click the agree button. Agree button. <laughs> the moment you like say that is what like if you are not paying anything right for anything uh, for for any service or any product, you become a product. Means company is using your information, your data, okay, to sell to others so that you become the customer for that guy, and finally you'll be purchasing the say the product or service of that person so nothing comes free you're <laughs> saying that nothing is free no no free meal is there so that is all like if you are getting any free book or anything something you you are providing to them or you are becoming a product so that the guy is selling you as a product to to their customer yes manos and one example i have observed is uh, i have added one product in the flip cart okay right. only i have added to the cart Okay, yeah. the same product I have seen it in another application in the yeah. Android phone right. as a uh, ad pop up. Right. See, so there is no interaction between the Flipkart app and another app. Correct. Okay, but this whatever I have added in the Flipkart as a ad. Okay, right. add to the cart. Yeah. Same product I have seen it in another app as a ad. Correct. Still amazed how they are giving the data for another application to another application. Absolutely, absolutely. So they're tracking, right? Like your intention to buy this product because the moment you have added that product in the in the shopping cart, it means that you are interested into this, regardless of whether it is provided by Amazon, it is provided by Flipkart, or it is provided by say Tata Click or, or any other organization. You are interested into that product. And those who are providing or manufacturing the product, they all are notified about this. This guy is interested into this product. So now they started tracking you. So wherever you are visiting, your digital presence is there. You are seeing that pop up, that ad is coming in there, and it is all happening around the clock with machine learning and all, right? So no one is there to to work on that part. Machine is there, and they keep on sending through all different channels to you, so that retargeting, retargeting, and retargeting is happening, and finally, person is is bound to buy the product. Yeah. Only thing is that, like uh, the urgency, they create a lot of urgency now. So they will say that this coupon code, thirty percent discount, is valid for today only. So they want to sell this today itself. The more and revenue they need to get that day itself. So, so that way they they keep targeting and all. Right, Manoj, this is regarding yeah. uh, the graph. What you have shared with us, so can you yeah. show the graph? Yes. In this graph, you said probability understood, but what about number of events? How did you calculate the number of events? Because you had one, two, three, four, five, six. Six numbers was there for every flow channel. So right. how you have got this? I would like to know about it. Right. So again, if you see the earlier slide, right? Earlier slide, uh, we have given the number here. Yes. Like this is the number yes. there, symbol is yes. there, like the page view. So mm. if the person has spent, say, five seconds on the page, Mm -hmm. We got this symbol one. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that way we create a trajectory. If the person has clicked on the product page and has gone through the product description, it gives you symbol two. So these mm -hmm. are the different events. Mm -hmm. So we do the targeting completely. We do all the sequencing and then we provide for each event. There is a number associated with this. And this number, like if you see on the right side, input sequence of event one, one, two, two, six, six, and all. So this is the uh, browsing pattern of that guy. The guy has landed to the page view, okay, and after that he has clicked directly to buy the product. So you can see that after viewing the page, he has come to number six, and then number two he has gone to understand what the product is better. So that way this all sequencing is done, and then this data is fed into the machine learning algorithm in the model. Yeah, and that model gives the prediction that uh, how the person is behaving or or interacting with the system. Yeah, uh, why, why I'm saying this because I'm seeing one to six number here, right. but there I'm able to see more numbers in the slide 10, 20, 30. Yeah, yeah, so this is just a symbol, right? This is just to represent to you the number, the like number of number. So okay. there will be a lot many, like there will be hundreds of events like that. Okay. okay. Okay, so the more, like, see, the idea is that again, as we talk about machine learning, so we have like, say, 75, 80% of test data, and then 20% the real data that comes uh, through the real time experience. So this model keeps evolving. So right now, say we have experienced that only like say 80 steps are there or, or 100 steps are there. But 
once we keep understanding the system better and better, we keep adding those events and all. So it keeps accumulating and our system becomes more and more mature. Mm -hmm. So right now it is giving you a prediction of 75% only. Then it starts giving you 78%, 80%, 85%. So that way the model gets matured. So each sequence means it's an event count, right? Yeah. So here. Okay. Right. Right. It event means like the person has visited the page. He was there in the page for five seconds. If the person is there for 10 seconds or 20 seconds, it's another event. Means the person has more affinity about the product. He is understanding things better. If the person is just spent two seconds and bounce off from the page, okay, it's another event. This that product is not of use for that guy. He is not interested in that product. So that way they start classifying into different segments, different objects altogether. And this so, graph, so, right? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay, and this graph is also taking care of. I mean, it is not just for one web website. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the, the ta ah. table, what you have shown is it has got a lot of uh, uh, URLs into it. Yes. So when we are scrolling through the mobile, let's say uh, Amazon uh, on Amazon, we are trying to scroll. Mm -hmm. So every item into it that will have a different URL. So for every URL, whatever we are browsing mm -hmm. or whatever activity we are doing here, yes, in this space. Right. So I think for every item, there will be a URL and right. every. So here, if you see in this uh, Excel sheet, right, the data that has been given, you can see here session ID is there. The moment you log in into a page, it creates a this session is a, ID. Uh, this is a user actually. Yeah, user actually. So yeah. because of the privacy and all, we will not keep the user information because there are certain things that you cannot keep this thing in the system. So it starts like the moment Vinod has visited a site, it creates a session. The so session ID is captured. And after session ID capturing, he, we see that this person has been into this page for five seconds or 10 seconds. After yes. that, he has gone to the product page and he started seeing the product description. And once he liked the product, so this is a third event, he click on buy, buy the product or add to cart. That becomes my fourth event. And once he click and then say buy the product, then again, it's like already bought. So I don't have to retarget the customer. But the moment he abandoned this thing, he has bought this thing, but he has not made the payment. He has moved out. Then I start my machine starts retargeting the customer. Mm. So these are the different sequence of events and all. Mm. There are multiple dimensions. One is like multiple. A is the user, mm. B is the product. Correct. So they can also they, uh, understand or interpret like for a product how many users have visited, they right. have liked it or they have dropped it or they have started comparing it. Excellent. Yes. They can also get an excellent. So it, multiple dimensions. Multiple dimensions. So so they know that how good this product is. Like say hundred people have visited this site and they they are they have shown interest into this product, but out of hundred, say fifty people or sixty people have bought this product. It means this product mm. has a huge potential. This product is okay. likable and this product is important for the people. So and then I start gathering some information that what are the features that person has liked about the product, or what are the things they started disliking. So that review remarks and all right. The the moment you write. Uh. Everything goes into okay. making this thing beneficial. You say that, okay, you have given five star rating, and then you say that mm. this product is excellent, and I have used this in this feature and all. But suddenly you say that, okay, I like this all product, but say this consuming a lot of battery, and my battery drills down fast. So they know that people are liking this, this product, but the problem is with the battery. The battery is drying very fast. So if I improve this thing, so I have better customer retention. On, onto that mm -hmm. so they can start waiting for that market. okay so i think this is the way how amazon publishes like this is the best selling product yes yes absolutely yeah. so your recommendation your best selling product and, and immediately that based they will say right based on your browsing history or based on your uh, buying uh, uh, history this is the second best accent you can pay so they will give you best accent also next best accent like you you have bought a lot of books from there Okay, and they understand that this type of theme or this type of book you are more interested in. So in that segment, whatever the best book is available, they will immediately show that those person who have bought this book, they have also bought buy this book. So yeah. so that way you can see so many new things that starts coming in there. And that also will be picked up from the user data itself. User data itself. Which is the best. <laughs> best part. <laughs> it's a flying wheel. Flying wheel. Yes, yeah, it keeps rotating. 
and I guess they know that uh, the person, uh, how frequently that guy has bought the thing, he has visited the site, and what is the buying capacity, how much he spent on 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 e-commerce site, how frequently the person buy, what type of product he buys or she buys. So based on that, all the recommendation, all the new product, next best text and that keeps on coming out there. So with this, what I understand, uh, they may have formed a based on user profile, interest-wise, then yes. the understanding-wise, yes. their capability-wise, because somebody would like to just see the product and just leave, but they will buy the cheaper products. Correct. So maybe those kind of things they have tracked already for individuals, and then they may be recommending whenever you open the site. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. So that, based on that, if they have, say, 1,000 users, out of 1,000 users, they may have segmented also. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. user category, if you fall in, you will try to buy this product. So I recommend you this product proactively. So all those things may be happening. Right. And that is where we get trapped. Okay, I saw this product and nothing I'm finding here. So right. that way it is working on. So this is for a retail side, you know, but when I go to other side of the things, mm -hmm. like where we've got bigger part and other things are there. So how do you see this machine learning will come and play the role? Like which part, like uh, like see, aircraft businesses and all, right. all this will not work out. So right. how do you say this is going to work out in those areas? So we are talking about mostly mm -hmm. sites where we are talking a one to thousand or billion uh, millions. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. here we have a one or two products, but buyers are very limited, maybe ten or twenty, not more than that. Right, right. So right. How does this mm -hmm. thing works out? That is my question. Correct. So that would be completely a B2B segment, right? We are not talking yeah, about the uh, retail customer here. We are talking about the big uh, brothers, like the big business who are yes. into B2B segment where they are buying. And again, yes. there is very limited products available. There are very limited buyers available, right? Say yes. those who are manufacturing the aircraft engines or aircraft equipments and all, right? Yes. So yes. there are only certain segment, those who are interested to buy this thing. So okay. they are very, very specific target area. They are okay. very specific uh, market uh, uh, who are producer. So just say, just compare this thing with Audi or top-notch car. Okay. Yes, yes. They know that everyone cannot afford this type of car. Okay. So yes, they will not yes. spend a single money to reach out to people and say that, okay, are you interested in Audi? No. Yes. They know because they have database of all the top-notch CEOs and they know that these people have the buying capacity and that is important for their status. So I start putting them into that segment. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. and only those people would start getting into my, my message, my all the yes. marketing and all. Yes, yes. So compare this thing with your aircraft part. So I know that this type of people or this type of business, they are looking for these services. So I will start targeting only those customers. Yes, okay. okay. Then only that will go. So I'm not spending a single penny on yes. a person or the company who are not interested in my product. Very, very target. You will never get, like say, if you have not visited on this site and all, you will never get any call of audit. Yes, you will yes, get yes. hundreds of call of credit card of ICC bank or yes, yes bank. Yes, because yes. they keep on doing this thing randomly, right? But yeah, yeah. The, the, the higher segment, right? You will never get a car unless you visit the site and you have shown the interest. Yes, yes, got it. So that is how they are targeting. That is how they are targeting. Very, very refined targeting and, and this machine learning is doing a really awesome job on that part. Okay. Okay. We have seen like we have done for uh, one of uh, the retail, uh, one of the top notch uh, automobile organization that uh, uh, that is for IV, like uh, it is like immersive experience. Yeah. That you don't have to uh, drive the car on the road, but with the immersive experience and all, you can ride the car. Okay. And you'll feel everything there, like within that ecosystem. So with IV and all, uh, those things are coming into picture. So okay. they, they target very, very specific customer on this. And they have, and still, they have a large customer base. So yes. if we talk about, say, that type of, uh, say, Tesla car and Audi car, still, we have very large market segment yes. those who are using that. So yes. I just need, I see, my target is that if I can sell 100 Audi, right, in one month, my target is achieved. I don't have to sell 1 million or, or 100,000 cars unit at all. Yes. Yeah, as long as I am doing my 100, 100 units sold, I'm fine with my all business targets and all. Yes, yes. So, so that way they just have the very standard, very sophisticated uh, set of target customers and they, they take care of those. Only. They take care of those. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
So hope that is interesting. And uh, with yeah. this, you got some view that how uh, it works into uh, into customer segmentation and customer intent, and uh, you can target. Uh, and then now the idea that see. I keep repeating this thing and keep giving you a lot of case study during this entire journey and all. Okay. Only thing that now you have to coordinate this thing with your area of interest and with your domain, how you can use this thing in your area. So this is like a food for thoughts. So you can start picking those ideas and those things, and then you can see that how you can improve and how you can target in your sectors in your domain. Was this useful? Was this interesting use case? Yeah, uh, very much. Yes. So uh, one thing which is always coming to my mind is like yeah. when somebody is picking up this kind of data, granular data, we know that everything is being tracked. Mm -hmm. So when uh, mouse movement, stay, uh, adding to cart and all that, uh, clicking, writing, mm -hmm. adding reviews, everything. So now there are a lot of data. Uh, let's take something as an example of shopping cart itself. Right. Now, uh, there will be definitely, now it is a jungle of data, hundreds or maybe thousands of columns just for one user. Now, how do we, uh, I mean, to derive a business thought out of it, mm -hmm. it will be a completely different role altogether. Right, right, absolutely. Which column to select for driving you, deriving your business decision? Absolutely. That itself is a very complicated task very complicated task and a very time consuming task. Agree. Mm -hmm. And that is where like almost 30-40% of data science engineer or data scientists spend their time to find out on, on the issue out there. Again, we know that we have big data now and millions of records or trillions of records are coming every second into the system, into data lake. Mm -hmm. And almost 90% are noise means they are useless data. We do not yes. need that, right? Mm -hmm. People are randomly clicking this thing. And again, every event is generating a set of data. We do not have to, have to track each and everything. And each and everything is not meaningful to me. So with this, like say, you have millions of records and then you have say thousands of columns are there in, into the system, right? With this, you have to get a set of say 100 or say 50 or say 20 important uh, columns data points right that mm -hmm. gives you the right visibility of your business that gives you the right insight about the buying pattern of the person or what are these values that is going to help the business to grow so with this you have to cut it down cluster it into different segment and then find out what are the most important columns or most important attributes are there that is going to help your business model to give you the desired report. So we will see this thing as part of our program that how we can like, uh, like uh, uh, cleanse the data, okay? And how we can clip the data into certain segments. So what are the important columns that we have to achieve? So there are a lot of algorithms around this. There are a lot of checks around this that you have to check only this type of, of data. Many times it happens that very similar information are there. So you can cluster this thing and put into single column. Mm -hmm. So that way we segregate the data, we slice the data and have the right set of data. And, and exactly that is the big pain point of a data science engineer or data scientist to look into and then give the right, uh, and make the right set of data available for their business model. Yeah. Because see, it is again, quality in and quality out or garbage in and garbage out the the garbage data you will give in the system you will not get the right result so you need to have all the right set of information available so that you can take the the right step and provide this information to the system into the model so that you get the right uh, output out of this and this gives birth to a lot of many other requirements like now let's say for every user there are thousands of columns Thousand of yes. columns of data huh? yes, yes so let's say we want company would like to have that retention for let's say for some duration only till the time he's doing the shopping he's logged in right. maybe for another 10 15 minutes they would like to have all millions of data and this will be backed up somewhere somewhere it has to be stored in the memory cache and so right. that it keeps popping up yes then after one day uh, because next day also when we go and browse some other website right. we are going to news website then also there is some pop-up right. so definitely right. they'll not be recording retaining all those hundreds of uh, columns, thousands right. of columns. Now right. they'll be right. compressing it. Right. 
Completely. But if you look at it from database perspective, mm -hmm. if you have for one element, you have a lot of data, uh, uh, thousands of columns, mm -hmm. and in thousand of columns for uh, one, uh, you need to have a retention policy mm -hmm. for individually for different different column or I mean, right. complete different. For yeah. some data, you might require it for a year. Mm -hmm. For some, it might end for just uh, a month. For, uh, something might even last long, uh, last just for a minute, uh, 30 minutes or something. Correct. Correct. Agree. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it yeah. is in database terms also, it is so complicated. So complicated. That is why, like, uh, for, uh, for this perspective, right, there are different segments or different components are there. So one is like say data engineer. So data engineer is primarily looking into all the database aspect and all, and they see and make sure that what type of data is retained, how much data is retained in the cache, how long the cache should be there, and how long I need to preserve the data in my system. Three months, six months, one year, or maybe in one month I have to discard all the data and all. Mm -hmm. So all those things are the biggest decision and insight. So based on that insight and all, <coughs> they decide uh, that how much data I need, how long I need, and how much that is going to be useful for me. To add on Vinodji and Manoji, like what I see like when we have bought a product, right. then automatically there should be a channel which should tell all my data point to just remove it, the data from the system. Maybe that may be correct, correct. Yeah, yeah, the place yeah. to reduce the retention of the data. Absolutely. Because if I have gone for a site, for a couple of times, third time I go and buy it. After that, all the data in this set as well as other sets should also evaporate from the system. Right, right, right. That is how it should be there. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And and you you might have seen something that say you had downloaded some some uh, application on your mobile. Okay, and just free yeah. of cost that mobile. Okay, and you will start seeing the pop up from Google or Amazon. The, uh, they will give you some advertisement there, and there will be a small icon. That icon, once you click that icon, it will say that. Okay, you are not interested in this product. So this will not be sold to you next time. So they are yes. tracking up to that level also that they, 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 like their machine learning algorithm had told him that you are interested into this product. But now you yourself is saying that I'm not interested. So the moment you click, that type of product will not come to you. So whatever the data related to that information was stored in the database, they will remove everything in single sort. The moment that you click and you show that you are not interested. Similarly, the, the example that you have taken up is that uh, you have already bought, say, a Lenovo uh, laptop, right? Yes. So they, they know very well that once you bought it, you will not require at least for next one year or two years time. Yes. So they will not bother you with Lenovo laptop anymore. What they will bother you with the warranty support of Lenovo. Yes. They will start upselling or cross-selling yes. and all. Yes. They will yes. say that, okay, you have bought this thing, so you might be interested into printer. So they will start showing yep. you printer advertisement. They yep. will start showing you three years of warranty, extended warranty and all for yep. the laptop. Yeah. Yeah. Or the battery of the laptop. All those things they yep. will start, but they will not start saying you. So yep. system is so smart now. So they yep. understand that how long your data should be retained, what type of data should be retained, and what is the next best action. Yep. So now yep. this NBO, next best action, NBA, is very, very yep. important, uh, important term. Because everyone wants to keep selling, right? So keep selling this, what is the next, right? What next? And yes, all. So yes. that keeps on coming every time. Yeah, yeah. like there the association principle comes into picture. If I bought a laptop, now you like to buy, buy a mouse. Now right. you like to buy buy uh, some, some of the other devices like correct, earphones correct. and all. Then you like to buy some of the other products which are there already in the HP or Dell or Absolutely. You will try to bring those products and start showing you. Know, maybe your interests, you will buy it. And if you click the product, then it that becomes a link up package for them. Okay. I then this guy is interested on this. If you say spend two or three minutes on that product to see what is the peripheral devices are available, maybe that data they will get in the start package. So that is how I think. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So that is how that the question Vinod has asked, right? Like we need to start slicing the data and all. Yes. And the data need to be prone, right? Because yes. again, I know that we have capacity of keeping this thing, but we do not want to keep garbage. Those data that is of no use, I need to again prune them, like remove yes. them also, right? So as a yes. data scientist, we also think about that, that how, like again, resource is always limited, yes. irrespective of like uh, how we are using it. So we need to clean them, cash, clean the cache and clean the, the, the system. So that way, like 
that is not relevant now that the person has already bought so i know that next one year he is not going to buy this product so i will simply remove that that data there so so that way and again like how we can upsell this thing cross sell this thing that information will keep uh, happening out there so so that way uh, it is there so that is how let's see facebook or meta now metaverse so much data like almost half of the world population are there on metaverse or on 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 facebook now 3 billion users they have and uh, like almost they are talking about 900 or 100 million users every second they have uh, people visiting on their page and everyone is free like they all have their account and level free there right they, they have got the gmail or say facebook their account or profile they keep uploading the image facebook and all so now these people are being targeted for the product because facebook knows so many information about the guy about the bike pattern about the interest about what he has bought earlier all those things so that uh, they sell this information or they make this information classified to the product vendor so that they can target that guy uh, very well. Right. Yes, Manoj. So, uh, okay, so I think, uh, yes, uh, and then uh, any other thoughts, any other questions you, you have in mind about this case study? Okay, so one uh, quick assignment would be for you that based on this case study, and it is uploaded into, uh, into the portal, into LMS, so you can download this one and think about your own area, okay? And just see that this type of model, how it is going to help in your business, in your organization. And create a single uh, like slider or something, okay, or maybe one image uh, to uh, depict that uh, what are the events you think uh, is, is there uh, that will define a person, uh, he is interested in your product or he's just uh, doing the window shopping. Or maybe like uh, for uh, Rakesh, uh, you have the larger B2B customers and all. So you yes. think about that, like how this intent uh, uh, part, right? How it is going to help the B2B customer. Okay. okay. Yeah. Think about uh, it. Because see, the idea is that like we have to brainstorm. We keep thinking yeah. around this. Yeah. And the more idea we have, a more top, like with all different dimensions, we start thinking, we should yeah. start asking a lot of logical questions to us. Yes. Yeah. And, and this entire program is designed in such a way that I do not want to make you coder as such. Yes. It is all... My single statement is that you should be a trusted customer partner. Yeah. And that is what every CEO intend to do. The moment they are a trusted customer partner, their business, their product, their services, they are going to thrive. The moment that trust is there, either within your organization, with your leadership team, with your N plus one, or within your team itself, you have established yourself as a brand out there. Right? Yeah. So, so, so that is the, the thought. That you need to be a trusted partner within your organization, within the partner, within your customer, within your ecosystem. And, and this type of different dimension of think that will bring a lot of value addition within the organization, within self, and how we can help the customer to, to get the right solution uh, to their, their business. Yep. So you take this assignment and then you complete this thing and put the thing uh, into LMS. And yep. uh, and likewise, right? Uh, every time I'll keep a new case study and all, and we'll talk about that part and, and keep reading there. So tomorrow again, we will meet at uh, eight o'clock. So yep. we'll have some specific session on the data science. So yep. we'll uh, run through data science. Uh, what are data science requirement? What are the components? And as a data scientist, what would be our role? What type of person we should be asking to our yep. customer? And, and those aspects we'll discuss in details. And data science application across sectors, logistics, healthcare, uh, search engine, many other aspects, right, where the data science is, is being used and how important and how effective it is. So we'll talk about that thing uh, in tomorrow's session. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sounds so good. Manoche, whatever, yeah. So yeah. whatever you have given as a book in bonus section, mm -hmm. uh, uh, installing Jupyter, then installing, uh, uh, I mean, going through the book, ebook. Uh, 
So that is, I'm, I, I'm sure it will be covering all that uh, technical aspect, which, yes. like how to write the code, understand yes. how to, yes. what is prediction and all, yes. what yes. is accuracy and all. Yes. So now with uh, how much in depth we need to go into that, uh, I mean, what all the credit, I should not say this way, sorry. I should ask like, what all things we should read from that? How much level, what all things we should understand and practice? Okay. So uh, right now, like whatever time you can spend onto that, okay. Mm -hmm. At least like uh, conceptually, okay. I do not want you to go and uh, do the coding part at all. Conceptually, like say we talk about linear regression, okay, mm -hmm. classification. So those concepts should be clear to you that what is the okay. outcome of linear regression? If mm -hmm. someone talks about that, I have to use linear regression algorithm. Uh, what is uh -huh. expected out? So only that much you need to understand. So okay. it has all the algorithm. You just need to understand what is the outcome of this. So for you, it is a black box. Okay. Mm -hmm. The code that would be done, it will be all done by the coder. Okay. Those who are into uh, like pure uh, Python coder or Python developer and all, they will do for you. At, at our stage, we do not have to have time and bandwidth to do that, right? That would be always done by the Python coder and all. But you need to understand that each algorithm, or we talk about six different algorithms, so what is the output of that algorithm and why we use that algorithm? Uh, that, should be, yes. that should be clear. So our intention would be that much. And I will like in all the subsequent uh, pages and all, or the, uh, the session, we'll talk more about that part, that why we need linear regression, why mm. we need clustering, why we need classification and where it is being used. Yes. Uh, right? Okay. So yes. to that way, uh, we have a very clear idea that no one can play with us. Because I know Maybe I'm not completely deep into this, but I know the complete picture. So I have the broader horizon on this. So I understand all the algorithms. And all. So that way the focus will be. And then uh, if you're interested to do some hands-on and all, you, 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 are, you, you are very welcome to do that, but uh, that is not the intention. Yeah. Going ahead, we should not be applying a algorithm or logic Mm -hmm. which should be applied on actually a classification and we are trying to put it over or impose it over the linear data or exactly. continuous data. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Like the way of doing it, way convert doing linear it. into classification data and then classified data and then you maybe we can put logic. Right. So, right. Just, right. Huh. so that understanding we should be very clear about that. What is this meant for and what is the outcome and where it should be used. So, so that level and how we can use the thing into real case study. Perfect. ये काफी अलग हुआ वरना मैं अलगोइडम ही पढ़ता रहूँगा तो फिर वो खुद ही एक टाइम कंज्यूमिंग चीज़ है बहुत बहुत मतलब वो तो पूरा का पूरा एक साल लग जाएगा वो पूरा उसका एपीआई एंड उसका अलगोइडम समझते समझते हैं हाँ एंड वो नहीं है मतलब अपना इंटेंशन नहीं है वी वी आर नॉट डेट लेवल राइट Everything and every uh, all the quotes are being so much uh, matured. Ki pata chalega baat bina ki you can directly download those packages from Python. Okay, and True. it is readily yeah. available. You don't need to understand ki how that has been done. It's already done, done for you. You use that and you start building the model. Exactly. Yeah. Like so that is uh, the intention altogether. Yeah. But the, uh, let's I, say you have Excel set, right? In Excel set, you have all different functions available. You never need to go to find out what is the VC++ code that is written behind the set. You just understand the function, the name of the function, and the outcome of the function, and how it works. Only yes. these three things. The moment you know, you can create your own IIR, this internal rate of return, or say some uh, mean, median mode, whatever you need. Everything uh, is will be displayed there. So yes. that level of things are there. And again, like the way this Python developers and all is, is uh, doing the contribution to this, uh, uh, this entire community is humongous. So that way, all the ready-made codes are available, the data sets are available. You just need to use the code and data set to build your model and show the output. Yes, it is. Right. I mean, for entropy, there is a function. Now you, you apply entropy or Gini index or anything. Right. Uh, you can just pull out uh, there is a code for i'm sure there will be something for information gain as well correct so uh, why do we need to do so much of math yes, apply right. log practice ratio yes. and all that correct and earlier like say again for the java community and all 
So for a simple thing, right? Like to extract the data from say you have Excel sheet and that has say uh, 10,000 or 100,000 records and say you have 200 columns out there to extract the data from that. And if you're writing the program in Java, you have to write at least minimum 100 line of code to get mm. that type of data there. Now with Python, so much libraries are and all are there. In a single line, you can extract the right set of, of it. Exactly. Yeah. So that was sophistication is there and it is keep growing, right? So later point in time, all those required things that is already available as a package in the library, you just need to use that, use the algorithm and then uh, get the output. So, so that much is there, but the book is good. So that book you can glance through and all, but my uh, idea or my suggestion would be that uh, all the important, uh, uh, the algorithms and all, you need to understand the algorithm and the output of this algorithm. That's it, that, okay. that is what our intention is here. Okay. So in case, I mean, I'm just proposing this to you, in case if uh, like I have covered few things already, gone in depth of that. Yeah. Uh, if anybody like Rakesh or Ajay would be interested, yeah. I can also take a session wherein I can explain like this is how we should be, this is our kind of data, how what all things are there, theoretically. We don't have to yes. program, we don't have to yeah. do that. Yeah. Uh, maybe it can help you understand. Uh, I mean, if you already don't know, then uh, it will be a you know, give and yeah. take session. Yes. yes. Uh, if yes, you don't yes. know, then uh, it will be something which I can tell you why we are doing it. What is yeah. the benefit? Uh, what is the, how do we see the accuracy? Why, how do we take a, uh, mind a uh, decision tree and yes. how does it help all that yeah. i can explain yeah yeah, yeah. that will be good session Viraji. let's reach a little bit more advanced on that and then we will have a good discussion yeah, absolutely. Yes. we will request manoj to allow you to then yeah, absolutely right. that so is that why... we all can understand what is happening there correct we will also enjoy those things yes yes sure it's a similar to data analysis right right yeah. um Okay. So yeah, so again, uh, so maybe like that would be the assignment for this week. Uh, you uh, take uh, your own case uh, study and then uh, work on that part and then upload this uh, into elements. And yeah. tomorrow we'll be focusing more uh, from uh, from data science perspective. Overall, yeah. the the work of data scientist and the component and the application and all. We talk about and then we'll have the assignments and all that. Yeah. Do you have a sample uh, data like how you, uh, our report should look like? Uh, the final output you're saying? Like you have given a task of uh, uh, what all criteria should be there. Let hmm. me go back to the slide, please. So introduction to the problems, shopper intent prediction. So here we have to uh, give the prediction item. Now, right. so you in what way we have to present that? So you, uh, okay, so you can create like, uh, uh, either in the PPT, you can create a problem statement, write a problem okay. statement and the steps. Okay. How to solve that problem. So you can like, step, step one, step two, step three and all. So that mm -hmm. way uh, you can uh, write it down. And if you can put this into pictorial view, that would be great. Okay. Like event uh, could be, we can list down some event wherein he is trying to click on the detail. He is trying to go to the price. He is trying to read a specification. Correct. These are all kind of events. Correct. Like, like so, here, in this example, right? The event one is saying that landing page. The moment a guy has come, right? Created uh -huh. a session ID and he's not on the landing page. The first home page is there. Then okay. the second event is that he has come to the category page. Uh, means like he is now browsing to the product, like say men's wear or women's wear and, and child wears and all right. So that way he is going there. Then he is coming to again back to the home page. So these are the events and all. So in similar line, uh, you think uh, that uh, these are the things that is required. So that way you can uh, uh, put across the map. So this will change based on our problem statement. Maybe okay. here we are talking about shopping. Uh, somebody yes. may be talking about maintenance of the part right. or breakdown of the part or sometimes right. we may ask the uh, what is the future business what they can look for so maybe those kind of things we can right right so one other thing is that like say for example that uh, in aviation business right uh, mm -hmm. you are saying that uh, uh, like say uh, 
there are two aspects. One is service side of this, like yes. when the uh, when the person comes and you to like uh, buy the tickets and and utilize yeah. the service right to travel yeah. there. Yeah. So from logistics standpoint, uh, you can uh, think about this that how this yeah. is going to help you. Or yeah. the other one is the from the product point of view that those yeah. who are the manufacturer, so yeah. how they can target the customer. So you can think yeah. around that. Right? Yes, yeah. um, my case will be like to see a person comes to an airline if he right. takes the uh, sites and go through goa or go through so correct, correct yes yes so yeah exactly so, so IG, that IG trajectory is, is, yeah. IG really taking the flight tickets or not so those correct. kind of things i can think of another company maybe right, right. Google domain, but another company to cover up this that's right yes, yes 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 so that is a product which so many people buy and maybe some of them can take excellent yeah yeah true very true What is your thought? Hello, Manoj. Yeah. You you are focusing on certain area. Right now, yeah, whatever you have discussed, mainly for the retail waste, right? Right. Yeah. I'm also looking into the one of the scenario just now. We have discussed about. Uh, Heroes based thing, so that is also have added it. So need to see what are the segments it has, how we can use it in a different segments. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The so it's retail. It's a big right. So magma of the things we are going to purchase. Okay. Right, right now we are doing a work from home, mm -hmm. so everything has to come in front of you. Mm -hmm. So the best thing will be a retail thing, and even in a multiple segments even in the healthcare also if you want to purchase something they are coming in near to you with the same uh, model right healthcare is a huge case study healthcare i mean the way you know robotics and artificial intelligence is being used uh, in healthcare uh, sector it's humongous lot many cases are there like say all this thing like all the operation and the fine grain operations are being done by robotics all all is used by through the artificial intelligence so a lot many cases are there. Like say, based on the uh, genomes and all, uh, genetics code and all, they are finding out now what is the probability of uh, a person uh, or a patient uh, uh, if uh, that guy needs a cancer treatment or not, or the chances of their kidney failure and all those things. So there are a lot of diagnosis related stuff that is there into medical science and, um, and this all historical data and the patient information is helping them to detect in a very early stage if uh, that person has the probability of uh, getting that type of disease or not. 